Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. This is a series that will show you how we train our own horses in ranch horse versatility. Today's episode, fun things to do with our horses. semi-rural here, actually semi-urban. Um, I love to do ranch horse versatility with my wonderful Flax and Morgans, but I don't have access to large properties, um, to large cows, so I have created my own little mini ranchette in which to train my horses um, in ranch horse versatility. I have some economical mechanical devices which I've created to help me uh, get my horses ready for the actual cow work. I do obstacles. I have some trails around my property that I can access. Dedication. This episode is a special tribute to Chuck Kessinger, DVM, who has given our local animal owners his dedicated service for 35 years. We sincerely thank you, Dr. Kessinger. Shadrach Triton Semi and her damn double track Demi Moore jumping at liberty to music. Semi and Demi, they love to do this. This is our little um, jump to music routine. Let's go, girls. Aw, oh, come on, let's start counting. There's one. Let's go. And two. Very nice, girls. Keep going. There we go. Okay, now we're second time around. Very good. Demi's in the front. Let's go. Okay. And one more time, girls. One more time. Let's go. There's one. Okay, let's go. Good girls. Ooh, very nice girls. Okay. Now we're going to reverse, and then Katie, can you get some biscuits? Come on around. We got to do it directions. You know that. Okay, one. Now semi in the front. One. Come on, keep going, girls. Okay. And two, they love doing this. Okay, one more time, girls. And three, very good. Woo, very nice, girls. Good girls. And they do get treats when they're done with this routine. Very good, girls. Doing gymnastics on horseback with Shadrach Triton Gym Crack, 1985, and Firecrest Easter Eve, 2006. It's one of the compulsories, which I used to do at a trot and on a canter. The legs have to be bent to absorb the rhythm. This is a riding seat backwards on her neck. Training Eve to lay down. Make a knot so that this lead rope doesn't come off. I've got a vaulting stir single on her, which is kind of convenient to use because it's got some handles in which I can put my rope and help to lift her leg, which you will see how I do in a moment. I put the rope through both handles, as a matter of fact. I ask her to lift her leg up. I have a, another lead rope of a different color. So Lay down. It's a 126. Pull a little bit. She's got her nose down to the ground. Lay down. I was thinking about laying down. And I'm going to pull back a little bit. Pull down a little bit. Pull back with the red. Pull down with the purple. 
hope that I don't get resistance thinking about it. The reason I know she's thinking about it because she wouldn't be putting her nose down to the ground. Lay down. She's going to hop. Lay down, Eve. Come on. Lay down. Good girl. Very nice, Eve. <laughs> Very good. That took, it's 129, that took three minutes. Trail riding with Semi and Demi. Here we are taking a short ride in Moor Creek Preserve. Another short trail ride with Sammy and Demi.
roping from the ground with a dry sawhorse steer. I'm Sonia Sokolow, owner of Minmore Farms. One of the things I like to do here is break away roping. So I need to keep my roping skills up. So every day I come out here and rope my dry steer. This is just in my side yard. Roping from the ground is very different from roping from a saddle and a moving horse on a moving object, but nevertheless, it is a way to practice. One of the things that I do, keep in mind when I'm roping from the ground, is that my left hand does not have the reins in it. Uh, so I pretend like the reins are in it because when I throw this loop with my right hand, I have to make sure I'm not throwing away the reins or pulling on my horse's head with my left. I try to keep my left hand by my side or what would be over the horn if I were uh, in a western saddle. And then I uh, pull slack as if I were uh, trying to break away rope. And uh, break away roping, for those of you who aren't familiar with the lingo, uh, is this. The Honda of the rope is such that when uh, tension is applied to it, the rope breaks away. Therefore, I'm not pulling on the, uh, on the cow's neck, on his horns. Uh, I'm, my intention is not to rope the cow and pull him around or jerk him around. My intention is simply to keep my skill uh, intact for catching a moving target. I have used this skill um, to save lives of animals, uh, like roping a, a cow whose uh, calf was stuck and the vet could not get her to stand still. So there are practical reasons nowadays to uh, want to keep a skill like this in tune, um, but uh, because of my love of animals, I uh, don't uh, do team roping or calf roping or even uh, uh, steer stopping. I will only do breakaway roping or another way um, that this can be done is to catch your target and let go of your left hand coils. A little bit more explanation of how to uh, pull slack. You uh, loop, throw your loop over the moving object. You catch your moving object. You take your rope with your thumb up and wrap it around the horn once or twice. Now my roping horns have rubber on them so there's no slip. And uh, a properly trained horse using his haunches will, uh, if you need to, pull to a, slot, a stop or change direction in order to keep the tension on the rope in order to either stop or redirect the moving object. Uh, there is a show called The Roping Show and a show called All Around Performance Horse on RFD TV, which is a satellite channel 379 in this area that um, gives really nice explanations and very professional um, viewpoints of uh, how to uh, rope objects uh, to review. This is a Honda. It uh, contains the coils of the rope. There is a, a bit of a skill to forming your loop. Uh, it comes with, uh, that skill comes with time. There are several ways to form your loop. Um, you make the loop comfortably uh, large for your target and for your own roping skills. I uh, almost always keep at least uh, two coils, these are coils, in uh, my left hand. I let the tail of the rope hang down. So when I am roping, um, I have to let go of these coils, but not the tail. And, uh, and at the same time, of course, not the reins. I don't want to pull on my horse's head. I don't want to let go of the reins. So at all times, the reins and the tail of this rope remain in my left hand and pretty much stationary. But uh, to reach uh, my target, I have to let go of coils, depending upon how close I am to my target. And when I swing my loop, I use a lot of wrist, wrist motion and it swings flat over my head. And when I throw my loop, 
I uh, use a lot of follow through. When I pull slack, I make sure that my thumb stays up uh, and out of the way, and I uh, uh, pull tautness in the uh, rope. Uh, in which case, if I've done it correctly, and if I've roped my object correctly, I then have um, the ability to uh, move my object one way or the other, or stop my object if I so desire. A short, very short description of what roping uh, is like uh, for an urban cowgirl. Roping and other fun things to do in the obstacle area. Here's another place that I practice roping, sometimes from the ground as I am now, sometimes from horseback, and that's in my obstacle area. I have many different obstacles here. And while uh, it's uh, a bit of work to train a horse to do obstacles, it's a lot of fun to accomplish the obstacles and to enjoy challenging your horse and yourself on the obstacles. So I consider this a fun place to um, train my horses and to be. And uh, I also like to rope back here. Now I'm going to show you uh, some of my obstacles uh, closer up. This is my newest obstacle. We uh, had to cut down a dead tree trunk, and uh, I looked at that and I said, whoa, that's an obstacle. That's something you might find on the trail. So we set it up here for jumping and uh, for training our horses so that they don't avoid the, uh, uh, the tree trunk jump, we put some saw horses on either side. Uh, you can uh, walk around with the camera and see that uh, there are a lot of things out here that are the kinds of obstacles you would find out on the trail. Um, here's a bridge. These eucalyptus trees are uh, a great post pole for serpentine work. Uh, here's some sawhorses I use um, as a, a gateway. Here's, some, here's a curtain that I use to challenge my horse of caution tape. Here's my rope curtain, white and yellow rope, hanging from black plastic. Um, it's a challenge to ask the horse to approach something like this that they don't generally see and ask them to calmly walk through the curtain in both directions. My square, made up of PVC posts, is a challenging in many ways. One challenge is just to walk through. Another challenge is to walk in, stand, turn around, stand, and then walk out. And then another challenge is to put um, crushed plastic jugs and bottles, uh, crushed uh, metal cans in here, let the horse see it, let the horse step on it. Unfortunately, the kind of thing that you might have to deal with on the trail, um, let the horse get accustomed to, uh, sacked out with, desensitized to those kind of obstacles. The barrels for walking through, walking around, walking backwards around, some uh, jumps at various heights, my uneven parallel bar jumps, over here, my pride and joy steps. This was a little bit difficult to construct. I did it from materials we had laying around, again, with the uh, thought of economics in mind. Uh, it is uh, very strong, uh, in my opinion, very safe. It is very challenging to horses to step up, stop, step up again, stop, and then step down at least a foot and a half to two feet into the sand. We can also ask the horses to step off on the right or the left. We have uh, traditional crossbar jumps that can go at three different levels. Here's my 16 foot balance beam, which is about eight inches across. Um, I asked my horses, I trained them to walk across this balance beam with all fours. Turn around and walk back in the other direction. At first, uh, it looks like it's going to be an impossible task, but it's very challenging but and very satisfying to uh, get your horse to uh, 
meet that request. I have here in this beautiful ancient oak tree a bunch of different obstacles available for use. You, uh, uh, a traditional blue tarp which we take off the hook and um, spread around the horse's rump, around the horse's neck, drop it, let the horse play with it. A, uh, a long rope on a, a vinyl post that we drag around from saddle uh, around the tree. I have various things hanging. Uh, slickers, these happen to be dog slickers um, that we take off the hooks and hand to each other. They crackle like a tarp does. They're a different color than a tarp. We uh, make sure that the horses are desensitized to having the feeling and, and the sound of this kind of thing around them. I have a chime uh, hanging from the tree, which I all I have to do is touch it, and it makes a chiming sound. I have a mailbox. What is an obstacle course without a mailbox? And in the mailbox, I have a number of noisemakers. We reach in, and depending upon uh, what we want to challenge our horse with, I just went to a party store, a New Year's Eve store, and bought a lot of little obstacle uh, noisemakers. And uh, I expect my horses, eventually, with training, to accept this kind of noise. Side passing with small steps is uh, a difficult maneuver for a horse that hasn't been trained. Um, it takes a long time sometimes to ask a horse to side pass, let's say an eight foot length, uh, uh, over a board or a piece of PVC. To help train my horses to side pass, I have pipes strapped to the ground various sizes of PVC. Here's a black ABS pipe. Here's a white, uh, let's say, half inch or three quarter inch PVC pipe. I challenge my horses by asking them to make small steps, step their front feet into the uh, corridor that's uh, uh, formed by this PVC and side pass with small steps, left, right, and then left, and uh, back, and then forward, step in, step over. All of these are challenges. My final obstacle, which I can um, change the shape of easily. It is at this time a T. It's made up of uh, white vinyl uh, posts that are strapped together. I can, uh, depending upon the training level of the horse, I can make the corridors that I'm asking the horse to travel narrow or wide. I can ask them to travel it forwards, turn, then backwards. I can ask them to travel backwards, turn, then forwards. These are very fine uh, communication uh, requests that uh, take time but um, are very satisfying to be able to uh, communicate with your horse uh, for these kind of uh, obstacle events. One of my newest and probably, I could say at this point, that my most challenging obstacle is my teeter-totter. It's a moving bridge. I ask my horses to step on the far end of the bridge, which is down on the ground, come up to this area right here, which is where the fulcrum is, uh, bring their weight forward, get their weight on this end, accept the movement of the bridge, and step off. I have four different uh, performance Morgan horses. Each one reacts differently. Each one is learning how to do this. Each one has successfully done it, but with various degrees of panicaholic behavior. Um, as soon as I have this teeter-totter obstacle mastered without panic from all four of my performance Morgans, uh, the three Morgans who are old enough to be ridden will be asked to do it from saddle. In, in some ways, I think the saddle a challenge is going to be easier than the line, uh, the, um, the the lead line challenge. Um, I have not been able to find any videos that show you how to train a horse to do it. Do this. I'm just using what I've learned about horse training in general, following my psychology. Uh, give them time. Uh, give them the opportunity to move away from something that scares them. 
um, give them a reward for good behavior, make the uh, bad behavior uh, humanely uncomfortable, and uh, repetition consistency. And I can say with confidence that I am uh, progressing with each lesson and I'm documenting each lesson so that if anybody else wants to teach their horse how to uh, negotiate a teeter-totter or moving bridge, they'll see a spectrum of horse behavior um, in relation to that request. And uh, that spectrum is a uh, totally uh, unanticipated spectrum. There are, out of four horses, I would expect one to, uh, by chance, to not mind at all, and then the other three will have varying degrees of uh, claustrophobic, panicaholic behavior, and we will uh, uh, be able to get them past those fears and those negative behaviors uh, with confidence, with patience, um, with time, and uh, with reward. You're looking at the teeter-totter from the other uh, direction now. The horse has walked up the corridor, um, they see, the horse sees openness ahead. Um, the horse uh, pretty much uh, is willing to walk up to the fulcrum and then the question of uh, uh, trust and respect uh, is handled in various ways, which you will see on my DVDs concerning the teeter-totter. Um, the objective is to let the horse go uh, from this narrow corridor, which gives me control over a horse stepping aside and not negotiating the teeter-totter from this, this eight-foot corridor up the ramp, uh, willingness to allow the teeter-totter to move, and then uh, without panicking, uh, allowing uh, the horse at his own pace to step off the teeter-totter and let it bounce back because, of course, as soon as the weight of the horse is off the teeter-totter, it bounces back. I don't think the horse necessarily has to be afraid of it. I think uh, a horse might enjoy teeter-tottering, as do children, eventually. <laughs>